Hey there, welcome to Supercharged Fridays. How are you? Where are you? How's it going? Welcome to episode number 56. We've been live for 56 in a row. So wherever you are, hope you're well, hope you're safe. Um, and when I say I hope you're well, I mean relatively speaking, considering the year it's been, how's it going? Comment in the comments. I know there's a bit of a delay when we hit live and we actually when you actually see uh, that I'm live. First of all, um, before I say anything, for anyone who celebrates or anyone who observes the Chinese New Year, it is today uh, and it is the year of the ox. So I forgetting, I'm forgetting how you say Happy New Year in in Chinese. I've seen it coming in the comments. In uh, I've seen it in uh, LinkedIn post today. If you know how to say Happy New Year in Chinese, put it in the comments. Come in and like this post. Uh, you know, give it some love, give it some emoji so that people can see that we are live and you know hop in because we have a as always, a juicy topic, and we're going to be talking about um, the opposite of Valentine's Day, <laughs> which is breaking up, uh, not so much from boyfriend-girlfriend, but from the organization, and that's a very tricky topic, considering we are in the middle of a recession, so I definitely acknowledge that. So, yeah. Um, hey, Stefano. Thank you. Good to see you here. And... So yeah, happy new year in um, for for all those who celebrate the lunar new year and we're going to get started. So before I do that, I do have to do a bit of a plug. Uh, if you haven't been listening to the podcast, how I got hired, check it out. It's free. It costs you nothing except your precious time. And the latest episode that I had, I talked to uh, an incredible woman who has got a job in the middle of a global health pandemic which has, uh, this pandemic, as we all know, has disseminated, obliterated, or what is the other word? Decimitated, no, it's not decimitated. Decim decimated, <laughs> decimated the hospitality industry. And she gets a job, not in her city, but in another city, in a beautiful Lake District uh, in the UK. And, you know, from HR to a general manager function, it's fantastic, it's a brilliant, episode every episode has these great guests who tell us stories on what exactly they did to land that dream job that changed the trajectory of their career if you haven't checked it out highly suggest you do it uh yeah i wanted to mention the podcast because i do think that it, it um you know can definitely reach uh, a lot more people i know you're in a very freezing part of finland and you got two feet or ten feet of snow risto it's good to have you here i wish i knew your name identify yourself linkedin user Hi, Sue, Ira. Wonderful. I'm happy you guys are here. And um, we're going to get started with um, our topic. And 30 more seconds, if I can say, just 30 more seconds. We kicked off the Supertouch Club, the membership for ambitious job seekers and career professionals. We kicked it off a couple of weeks ago. And we had our first live coaching session this week on Tuesday. And it went off really well. We did all things resume building. And in two weeks' time, so these people are going to be working on their resumes, my members. And in two weeks' time, I'm going to be doing their resume audits, me. These are sessions that normally would work up to, you know, a lot more money, like a thousand bucks an hour, thousand euros, thousand dollars. And this is the price of a Netflix subscription. This is specifically targeting people who want to improve, who want help, but can't necessarily afford to pay that sort of money. So if you haven't, Check it out, superchargeyourself.com. Um, I'm keeping this membership open because I do think that um, if anybody wants to take advantage of it, they can do it. They can watch previous recordings. And in two weeks' time, so that's 23rd Feb, we're going to do the live resume audits. If you pay someone a good resume writer, it can cost up to $2,000. This is a steal. And with me, and I've seen a quarter of a million resumes, so I know what I'm talking about. So definitely check that out. And um, wonderful. <laughs> I see some superchargers here. Eva Akanksha, lovely to see you. Um, expose your mind, <laughs> I'm guessing. Okay, great, lovely, great. So what are we what are we gonna talk about? We are gonna talk about how do you know when it's time to quit from your organization? How do you know this? And that is particularly <sighs> tricky when the world is in the middle of a global, not a recession in one country or one continent, but a global recession, right? It's tricky. Even if there was no recession, it's tricky because you want to know, can I afford to leave right now if I don't have a job in hand? Or can I quit right now if I'm not happy? 
Um, and what are the options out there? Can I think about quitting? When do I start looking around? When is that moment when I start looking around and say, I'm done? Yeah, there are days, there are moments in our life, I call them those crossroad moments when you're like, I think I know what I have to do. And sometimes you look for permission. But today is not about giving you permission. Today is about making you think. Uh, I'm done. I'm sick and tired. And I know what I want to do. And hopefully this session helps you clarify that the thing that you're going to do is right for you or not. Nobody can say that to you. Any coach, any mentor who says, I think this is what you should do. Be very careful of that person because they have not walked even a minute in your shoes. I have to give you this disclaimer anyway. So yeah, um, so we're going to get cracking. Um, yeah, I do think it's quite a relevant topic. Please identify your name because some of you haven't given LinkedIn permission to share your name because of your privacy settings to external apps. In this case, the app is called StreamYard. So you'll have to give permission because otherwise it's not cool. I can't call your name out. Uh, Mitun Shivangi, you're very right. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to tell you these signs, okay, from experience. Maybe you have other signs. I'm not going to talk into reasons. Reasons and signs are not the same. I'm specifically talking about those signs that you feel. Sometimes you feel them in your gut. You see them, you feel them. They're like the sixth sense, right? Um, so yeah, let's get cracking. And lastly, what, what I want to say is it's the year of the ox, right? For the Chinese New Year, in case you're tuning late, I said Happy New Year because today is the year. Let's learn from the ox. It's strong, tough diligent, hardworking, and a bit stubborn. You know, there's an expression as stubborn as an ox. It's not a bad thing to be stubborn sometimes if you know you're on the right path. Obviously, if you're not sure, be open. But otherwise, steadfast, stubborn. I think of it when I think of an ox. So now I want to clarify one thing before I get started because there is a difference between going through a low phase in your career you know, there are moments where you are not quite yourself or you don't feel challenged. There's a big difference between going through a low phase and going through, I think I want to leave, right? They're very different. So hopefully by the end of this, you're going to be able to see what the difference is because a low phase comes, by definition, it's a phase. You see, phases are not permanent. Phases means have a cup of tea, you're going to feel better. Go for a walk. That's a phase. And maybe the phase lasts a few days. Phase, days. It's rhyming, you see. But that slump, that feeling that you have that it might be time to leave, that's a lot deeper. And it doesn't go away with a good talk. It doesn't go away with a nice cup of tea or coffee. It's a lot more, yeah, I am pretty sure it's time to look around, right? We have our human instinct, so please don't take it for granted. It's there for a reason. And oof, this is one of the reasons, between, um, it's one of the signs which is very, very clear uh, when it might be time uh, to leave. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be touching upon this. Rajini, Shashank, Shashidhar, what do you advise to mid-career? If you can be very specific with your question, I can definitely help you. But I'm going to get started because I've been making you wait long enough. Let's talk about those six signs, right? <laughs> a last disclaimer, I promise you, and then we're going to get going. This disclaimer is, whenever we start in a company, we have really strong reasons. Yeah, we don't just say, I think I'll just start here. Let's see what. Usually we don't do that, right? We take our career pretty seriously, and we're in the driver's seat of our career. So if you say yes to a job, it's a yes because something felt right. The reasons are really strong. You don't just say yes because it's good money. Nobody does that. Not usually, right? It's a lot more. You feel like you're going to be growing there. You you had a good feeling about the company culture or the boss attracted you and you had a good click with him or her. There's a strong reason. When you leave, you need to have a strong reason as well. You don't just say, I'm out of here. I'm done. Yeah, that looks really good in the movies and glamorous. You know, I'm thinking if you guys have seen Jerry Maguire, he's like, I'm done. And it's a big dramatic scene and everybody claps and you're yeah, that doesn't, in the real world, you're kind of screwed if you do that, right? It's kind of career suicide. You want to be very careful and intentional and strategic in how you think about it's time to stay, it's time to leave, it's time to join. Join, stay, or leave. Big deals. Those are big deals. We're not 
joking around. Your career is a big deal and it's sort of important, right? Let's not forget we spend more time at work than we do in our personal life. This is the reality we live in. So you might as well be careful and you might as well be um, happy. So <laughs> you're waiting for an eye appointment. Be careful. I'm so I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. But uh, I hope you got your mask on. Obviously, if you're surrounded by by people. Mithun, I promise you I'll get back to you on your question. Hopefully, Biju, I don't remind you of your mom. <laughs> okay. So here are the six signs that it might be time to think about your job, whether it's quitting, whether it's staying. I'm not saying you quit immediately, but it's time to think about it. Here's the first sign. Energy. Energy. Albert Einstein very famously said, energy cannot be created or destroyed. You know that. I know that. If you've studied science in school, you know that. However, we also know energy can be reduced. It can diminish. So your energy is not unlimited. It's a physical thing. It's not unlimited. So the thought of going to work and going to work, we're in COVID, so we're not physically going to the office. Maybe we're not. But we're going to work in our workplace, you know, a little corner in the room, whatever it is. Let's forget that for a moment. But the, the thought of being at work and actually being at work, not just the thought, but hold on with me, bear with me here. The actually being at work is draining your energy every single day. It's not giving you energy, it's taking energy away because the work isn't inspiring you, whatever it is, but it's going out. You see, it's not building up. When you think about something, oh, I'm excited about that, that builds you up. In this case, it's not building you up. And you know it. This feeling is very personal, feeling hot. This feeling is very personal and you know it if the energy is not there anymore. So energy cannot be created or destroyed, but energy can be diminished. And if your energy is being diminished day after day, month after month, year after year of being at your workplace, it's time to think about what's really going on. Make sense? Great. And um, welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here. The second sign is very clear. All of these signs, I hope for you, are crystal clear. They are for me. They are for my clients. And anybody who's, you know, I've spoken to about this, they're like, oh, I can check all your six boxes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, then we know what we have to do. This particular sign, when we say learning, what does this mean? It means you can, you can do this job with your eyes closed. Uh, in Hindi, we say, it's, I can do this with my left hand. Yeah, it's so easy. It's not challenging me at all. And um, I'm not really learning something new. I not only can do this with my eyes closed, not only can I do this with my left hand, it's not challenging me at all. It's become like I'm on autopilot, right? Ask yourself, one year ago, two years ago, did I learn something different? One quarter ago, one month ago, have I learned something different that I didn't already know? And have I been able to apply that learning at my work? You will know the answer immediately. Is it yes or a no? If it's a no, it's time to think about it. That is the second one. Then uh, the third one, I have some people joining in. Yeah, depletion, energy creation and energy depletion. Good morning, Lauren. Uh, the third one is growth. What is this? There's two sides to it. Many people think of growth as only vertical growth. Yes, it's true. It's important. If you've been 10 years in the company and you have been growing two ways, either vertically or horizontally. Vertically, we know promotions. You get more responsibility. You get more pay. You get more satisfaction, right? Horizontally, I've been in this position. I moved from this to this, and it's completely different. And I've gained new skills that I didn't have before. It's kind of related to learning. But the growth is, yeah, growth and learning go hand in hand. But growth is also very satisfying and very fulfilling when it's vertical growth as well. Because if you're 10 years in the company and you've been at the same level, ask yourself one year ago, two years ago, are you at the same level that you were in two years ago, one year ago? There could be a sign of stagnation there. 
And if there's a sign of stagnation, you know what they say about stagnant water, right? It's not safe to drink anymore. It's not, it's not um, palpitable anymore. So that's an issue, not palpitable, palatable. <laughs> who, who cares about correct English? <laughs> So stagnation creeps in, right? And we don't always recognize it because we think we're doing pretty well. There could be some glamorous thing going on on the side and you're like, oh no, I've got this responsibility. Yeah, but how long, when was the last time you actually got applauded for you know, a promotion or a lateral move? If that hasn't happened, there's a clear sign that something's not, something's not right. Um, every now and then I'm just gonna check in in the comments, but a quick recap for those who are joining us late. We are talking about the six signs when it's time, it might be time to leave. The first one we talked about is energy, not energy like increasing when you think about work and go to work, but it's actually energy being depleted. The second is you're no longer learning. You could do this job with your eyes closed. The third one is the growth. There's no growth in your comfort zone. That's a problem. And there's no comfort in your growth zone. Mm, both go hand in hand. So it's very interesting. And Oh, well, lovely so much to see you here. And Stefano, our friend in uh, in Canada, is telling us comfort zones are particularly dangerous. And the state of stagnancy is difficult for people even to recognize. I so agree with you, Stefano. Um, when things aren't going well, people can still find comfort in this comfort because they know what to expect. It's an excellent point. And I will add with add to what you said. Stefano, people can still find comfort in discomfort because they know what to expect. And people can still find comfort in discomfort because the thought of anything else is too scary. <laughs> you know, the fear of the unknown. It's This is familiar. I know what to expect. This is familiar. So it's pretty much what you said. So that's that's an issue. And the growth mindset is exactly the opposite of this. Growth mindset is exactly the opposite of this. This is a friend. Your growth mindset is your friend. So if you're thinking about growing, stagnation is the opposite of that, right? So books, Mohammed Samani, great, fantastic. I'm glad you guys are enjoying yourself. Thank you for liking my mug. This one is a very tricky one. Let me explain. Impact. What does this mean? You get told every now and then you need to prepare a spreadsheet with certain numbers. Think about routine tasks that you're asked to do. Let's say you have to prepare a PowerPoint presentation and it takes you three weeks to prepare it. It's a big one for the board, CEO, CXO, whatever. PowerPoint presentations, spreadsheets, project. You were in a project for a couple of years sometimes. Now, what happened to those tasks? What happened to that assignment? What happened to the project? Are you able to tie it to the purpose of the company? Are you able to tie it together, stitch it together to the purpose of your position? If you can't, in sociology, we call it alienation. Alienation. You feel like an alien in your own body. <laughs> it's like, um, what am I doing here? I don't see the impact of what I'm doing here on my job, on the company, on the company's future, and on my colleagues. Good Lord. Colleagues. You may not see the difference with them either. You don't see if you're making a, an impact. Do you know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? It's a little bit more conceptual as a as a topic, uh, the others were a little bit easier to describe energy, learning, growth. If you understand impact, let me know in the comments what it means to you. Because um, like I said, it's conceptual. It's not very easy. Like it's not tangible, but I have felt it in the past. I felt it very much in the past. In fact, with the week that we're in today is the week that was my last week in one particular organization. I'm not saying that they were bad and I was good. Not at all. It just at some point didn't feel like it was a fit anymore. So Valentine's Day has a very <laughs> strange feeling for me. For some people, it means great love, etc. For me, Valentine's Day comes up as breakups as well. You know, it's interesting. And what did I learn about those from those breakups? You know what I mean? Um, hi, Ahmed. Could you please explain your <laughs> comment? Uh, so that was this, uh, the fourth one, which is impact. Then the fifth one. The fifth sign that you know you're not in the right job is indifference. Oh my gosh, this is a very dangerous one. 
the opposite of love. What is the opposite of love? I'll wait a second. I want you to put this in the comments. What do you think is the opposite of love? Okay, it's uh, uh, it's a stupid thing to ask you because the answer is already there. <laughs> the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. Another word for indifference. I'll tell you. Oh boy. Another word for indifference. Apathy. Apathetic. What does that mean? I don't care anymore. I've stopped caring. I've stopped caring about you. It doesn't mean I hate you. I just couldn't be bothered to care about you, which is worse than hate. I don't care what happens to you. I don't care what happens to this job anymore. Um, exactly. Feeling nothing is indifference. That's it. You guys are you guys are all completely on the right track. For all purposes, I have mentally checked out. You know, you go into a hotel. Excuse me, sir, what time would you like your check-in? You have mentally checked out of this hotel, your job, the hotel. And things are happening around you. You couldn't be bothered. Nothing is motivating you anymore. Your colleagues, we talked about it in the in the fifth one as well, which is impact. You don't see any impact happening because of your work on the company, on the bottom line, on the on the colleagues, nothing. And the colleagues are not making a difference to you anymore. You know, some of us make friends at work, right? I've made a couple of great friends at work. But when you're in that stage of indifference, you just don't care what happens to them. You are not really interested in company announcements. There was a quarterly earning. You should be excited. You got an award. <laughs> It's like you couldn't be, you couldn't care less. Heck, your salary doesn't motivate you anymore either. When that happens, you've got some serious thinking to do, my friend. Because money only motivates us, money only motivates us at a certain up to a certain point when it's related to you know the hygiene factors. Do I have enough to be able to pay you know the bills? put food on the table, take care of my children, etc. Once you do that, it doesn't motivate you anymore. Then it's all about pushing, learning, growing, potential, all of that good stuff. If you're not getting that, you couldn't be bothered. So the indifference part is very dangerous. I personally, in HR, I'm going to tell you the flip side. When you see, when, you, when you're in HR or when you're in senior management and you see people who are indifferent, it's a very dangerous place to be. I'd rather they leave because they are very dangerous to the company. They don't care. They don't care about the reputation of the company. They can seriously cause some damage, you know, to the company. So that's a concern. That's a very serious concern. Um, and that's why, you know, it's an important sign that I want to mention that you never take for granted. And you know it if you're in there right now. If you're watching me, <clears throat> whether you're on uh, live with me right now, or whether you're on the replay, think about it. If you're in that stage where you couldn't care less, I couldn't give a tiny rat's backside tiny rats backside like i have a heard, i've heard people say this to me that means dude babe <laughs> you're mentally checked out you're no longer thinking about what's good for this company anymore um <clears throat> before i go to the next one there is a limiting belief that sometimes you can't make money doing money what we like um that's a good point um slbs Self-limiting beliefs are a problem. They're the opposite of abundance mindset. And that's what you're where you're coming from is a scarcity mindset. But let's not glamorize it. Okay. I don't want to be this person who glamorizes and say, I'm going to take the leap. I'm going to quit my job. I'm, I'm going to come to that. Sorry. I'm just going to come to that because I don't want to lose my, my train of thought. Um, LinkedIn user, please identify yourself because I want to address this again. Please put your name in the comment so that you can say I am so and so. And in brackets, you can say LinkedIn user. Please do that because I don't want to keep saying LinkedIn user. It's very impersonal because I do want to come back to this question. So please, 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 please remind me. Um, hey, books, what's happening? Uh, love, and, <laughs> love and hate can be pretty close to the, each other, right? Because they come from this place which is very like passion and attachment. Feeling nothing means exactly that. And there is, a, you're completely, we are completely um, on the same page. Um, Rajiv is asking, what is the difference? What? Sorry, Rajiv, I don't understand your question. If you could explain what is the difference in professional life. Uh, yeah, indifference is a big enemy, actually, when you don't care anymore. 
and we are all on the same page. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, Tammy. Are you the one in Ireland? It's good to see you. Um, yeah, good point, Tammy. I'm going to come back to you, I promise. And this last one, when I say this last one is my favorite. When I say it's my favorite, I can tell you, you know this feeling. At some point or the other, we've all been caught up in a job which we don't necessarily love and we don't think of beautiful blue skies and butterflies and unicorns. I'm going to describe it to you. It's almost scientifically correct. How did I say that? I said almost. This is anecdotal. There's no proof in it. There is a Sunday feeling that starts on Sunday morning. You have a great Friday. And I'm thinking, go for a moment, go back 12 months and think non-COVID times, right? You need to physically go to the workplace. The Sunday feeling, you have a great Friday. You have a wonderful Saturday. You completely enjoy yourself. You're immersed. You're detoxed from work. You're, um, you look forward to the weekend, in fact. You can't wait for the week to be over. You look forward to the weekend. Friday comes around. You have a great Friday at work because you know the weekend is coming. You know, you're in that good mood. There's a good vibration. Saturday is wonderful. Sunday morning, you wake up. This feeling of TSF starts in your mind. And you tell yourself, I have to go to work tomorrow. I have to go to work tomorrow. It's an uncomfortable feeling that starts in your mind. It's there. The whole time, it's there. By the afternoon, this feeling is in your heart. And it's giving you a very sinking feeling. I have to go to work tomorrow. I have to go to work tomorrow. Heart is sinking. Maybe you're enjoying a hobby. Maybe you're with your family, but you're not mentally with them. There's a high chance, there's a high probability that you've already started receiving emails on your phone from the boss or from colleagues. There's stuff to be done to prepare for the coming week. By the evening, this feeling has moved to the pit of your stomach. And you're miserable. Like, you're miserable. And, you know, we have that feeling sometimes when we are in school. Even looking forward, there's a Monday test. But when you have this feeling on a daily basis as an adult, what's going on? If work is what you look forward, I mean, if work is what you do to look forward to the weekend, Life is long. Life is long. People say life is short. I disagree. Life is long if you're unhappy. It's really long if you're unhappy. Is it worth it? So put it in the comments if you've ever felt it, the TSF, the Sunday feeling. And it's not one Sunday I'm talking about because there's a big presentation coming up. I'm talking on a regular, consistent basis. All these signs are not one-off. These are very much on a consistent basis. So quick recap, what are those signs that it might be time to think about your job? I'm not saying it's time to quit. It might be time to think, what are you doing? And, you know, the energy is being depleted from your work. You're not learning anymore, anything new. You can do this job with your eyes closed. Heck, you're not growing in your job either. You're pretty much doing the same exact thing you were doing two years ago. There's been no promotions. There's been no lateral transfers, nothing. Uh, the impact of what you do is limited or none. You don't know what happened with the project that you prepared. You don't know what happened with the PowerPoint that you you know prepared for the big boss. You don't know what happened. What did she or he say to you anymore? They never came back to you. You stop caring about what people say. You stop caring. They're completely indifferent to your job, to your prospects, to the company's future, to your salary, to colleagues. You're indifferent. And the DSF, which is this horrible sinking feeling that starts in the morning in your mind and moves into your heart and then moves into the pit of your stomach. Does that make sense? Does that ring a bell? Does that resonate with you? If it does, please put it in the comments. Give me some, give me some reactions because um, I'm in a room talking to myself and I feel a little bit idiotic. Um, perfect. So... Um, that's okay. Hi, Makbul. So Rajiv is asking, what are the types of limiting self self limiting beliefs that maybe types of self limiting beliefs to succeed in your professional life? Self limiting beliefs are not your friend, Rajiv. 
self limiting beliefs are telling you you're not good enough and they are coming from a place of negativity or your friends or your family or from within there's a critic inside that's telling you these self limiting beliefs are you know everything you're not intelligent you're not smart you're not good looking you're not thin you're not um in the right school you're not in the right job it's not the right brand you need to work for something more they, it's very negative um and you need to recognize it because that mindset very rarely will let you win it's very interested to keep you where you are so i don't quite understand your question but it's the opposite it will never let you succeed in life you know what i mean the opposite of this is abundance i'm good enough and there's plenty out there for me and i've got plenty of friends who'll help me and if somebody gets a job don't be jealous be happy because it means people are hiring and then you'll get a job as well do you know what i mean hi namrita um yes now i'm going to come to a couple of questions because i received two questions from people over the week um when i talked about this topic so um hopefully this will make it a bit more uh real for you the sunday scary some people call it the sunday scary is that pit oh my gosh you know it and then monday is just awful like you know when you start like that like there is no way in hell monday will be a beautiful day it just won't because it's mentally been decided that it's awful sunday is awful and you know you're just living you know you're just surviving not thriving you're surviving and that's an issue so i'm going to hi survi i'm going to definitely answer your question i'm just going to um, because a couple of others who've been waiting um who had other questions um there is a very huge thing about denial uh, rajini you're very right and momentum nobody likes momentum inertia feels comfortable and which is why um, we focus on it so so before i go into the questions i wanted to say because um tani you had a you had a question and i said to you i'll come back to you there's a limiting belief that you can't make money doing what you like that's a big um limiting belief i don't want to be naive and i don't want you to say um heck i'm throwing all this away and i'm going to start my own company be practical be real i've said this so many times the starving artist syndrome is not a pretty look it's not comfortable you don't want to resent yourself you don't want to resent the coach that tells you leave all this and go all in you can do it side by side you can do it slowly but nobody can help and say i'm like i have a client i'm talking to her today she's extremely unhappy she's getting bullied harassed you name it um and she feels like it might be time to leave but she doesn't have a job in hand we're working closely together for her to get a job but it's not coming she's quite senior it takes time and the country she's in they're not exactly picked up after corona right so should she leave nobody can answer that except for you and i'm going to say this again and again nobody knows the answer except for you. you sometimes we need permission from someone don't do that it's a dangerous thing to do uh because we're just looking for validation from someone that oh i think i should do this and what do you think so it's 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 dangerous yes you can make money doing what you love yes you can you got to figure it out you got to have a plan you got to test it and test it over a period of time and you got to put in the work of course it's possible but people are always looking for a shortcut and are like giving giving themselves very artificial uh, timelines by 6 months i should have i should have had 50 clients how on earth can you control if people buy from you or not not right away it takes time to build goodwill to build a personal brand etc so yeah i wanted to address that for um for tammy because i think that's an important question um hi ashish self limiting beliefs drag you 100% drag you i uh, couldn't agree more thank you for joining us guys so i have a couple of questions and surbi i'm going to come back to you um there's a very specific question here i have from someone i work in hr and sales you know she's in a startup so when you're in a startup it's very normal for you to have um multiple hats right but now i'm looking to move in a large company and i would like to specialize in a specific domain which one do i choose hr or sales so i know this person is watching me right now i'm not going to take her name i can't answer this for you i can't answer this for you 
please do not outsource your decision making to a coach because nobody has walked in your shoes for more than a minute nobody now i'm convinced you know the answer but you're feeling uncomfortable and you're looking for a validation or a permission to do so ask yourself what are you really strong at really strong at you when you do this it makes an impact it makes a difference and when you do it people say wow that was wonderful great job what are you really strong at you know when you have validation from outside you know you're strong at something it's not um, you know a figment of your imagination and what is it that you like to do you love it sometimes what happens is we really are strong at something but we don't like it like i think i'm pretty strong now at video editing i've been doing video editing for 2 years i don't like it so this doesn't count look at that overlap what are you strong at and you have confirmation you have performance appraisals that you're strong at something and i'm glad you're asking me this question because this is a thing about should i leave should i not leave is the reason strong enough this could be sales it could be hr that inner satisfaction only you know which one it is that gives you inner satisfaction i personally think that sales is a very strong role i'm not saying go do sales ignore hr but i think at some point or the other we should all do sales these are skills that we learn which will help us for the rest of our career rest of our career those are strong skills uh, sales you know those are strong life skills i don't like the word soft skills but those are strong relationship building skills hr has a bunch of those as well so only you can answer that i don't believe people i don't like it when people say i think you should go for this you know this is what the market how do how on earth do they know that and this is me putting my coaching hat on not the mentor hat because the mentor will tell you this is what you should do please don't listen to anybody except yourself i know this is maybe not the answer you're looking for but you know very well what you're really strong at and it gives you joy think marie kondo sparks joy <laughs> you do this oh you know you're like oh i could walk on air i love this part of my job you know what that is if it sales go for it every job has its pros and cons every job i don't think you can run away from that um so i hope that helps you and good morning lee how are you and surbi says you know you're in the exact same spot ah oh, yeah good so listen to surbi ask yourself what will you be happy doing day after day for the long run and you know um another thing you can ask yourself which might be helpful to you what is it that one thing you could do you could do it for free you could do it for free you love it so much like i am doing it right now i am on a live coaching call i don't get paid i've been doing linkedin live 56 weeks in a row i don't get paid for it linkedin doesn't pay me i haven't you linkedin you don't monetize your content i couldn't care less i'm indifferent to that i love this and when you love something and you can do it for free that's the thing yeah i think the word passion is a bit overdone and the concept is a bit overrated and simon sinek says passion is a consequence when you feel it you feel good but there's a lot of pressure to feel passion when you start you don't always know you got to try things out experiment so i hope that helps you um then i'm going to um come to another question hi arun uh glad you're joining us i'm i suggest you watch the replay cuz you're definitely going to see um the thing we're talking about what you're good at and what you like doing that overlap i explain it in a little more detail so when we are done definitely go and watch the replay glad you're here then i have this question i read a very interesting thing um so we two days ago in the harvard business review and there's a higher percentage of women who talk about imposter syndrome than men so that article is saying this imposter syndrome business has been done to death since the early 80s and let's stop telling people that they have imposter syndrome read that article right it's it's i think the subject is stop telling women they have imposter syndrome if you google this and if you write hpr if you find it in the please put it in the comments for everyone's benefit i can't do that right now uh half the time it could be sexism racism 
ageism, all kinds of things going on. And real imposter syndrome is you're not good enough. You landed this job by accident. One day you're going to be found out you're like a fraud. You're a criminal. And I don't know. You either manage it or it manages you. It has managed me for 10 years. I haven't managed it. I'm being confident and authentic here. I'm confident because I know it. I've overcome it. But it comes back. It creeps back a little bit every day, a little bit. Um, and I know this happens with high achievers. I know this happens with lots of people, including um, Oprah's talked about it. Michelle Obama's talked about it. Famous people have talked about it. Most people don't. Most people want to look very, very self-assured. Um, it comes from knowing your self-worth and the achievements and the accomplishments that you've done and the sense of peace and being grounded that you're just enough. You're exactly where you should be. It's a very short answer. We can talk about this for an hour. Uh, maybe I'll do a session on imposter syndrome one day uh, in detail and I'll bring in a guest. But for now, you manage it. You, you, you deal with feelings of self-assuredness and confidence and you're good enough. And if that doesn't help you, go back and look at your testimonials on LinkedIn. Go back and look at your past performance appraisals. Ask friends to describe you in a few words. Sometimes that external validation also helps. If the internal isn't working for you, then check out external what's going on. Jennifer, thank you, my love. Such a huge help. Please click on this link that Jennifer has kindly uh, put it, uh, uh, you know, uh, put in. As you can see, it says February 2021. So this is a very recent article that's come out in Harvard Business Review. And I love the fact that Harvard Business Review comes out with, you know, things that blow things up a little bit from time to time that we take for granted. Imposter syndrome has been going on for so long. And it's also men, it's also women, but it's a larger proportion of women who are impacted by it. So this is a little bit off topic. Survi, you found it. Fantastic. This is a little bit off topic. I want to get back to the topic now. I hope this helped you, Survi. Uh, now I have a very detailed question from someone. I hope you're watching. And this question was really long. <laughs> so I, I shortened it up a bit. I'm going to tell this person who's watching. You know who you are. In the future, when you're writing something, try and use something like Grammarly. I know there are a couple of other tools. Grammarly is one. G-R-A, if you've heard of it. Uh, it's very helpful to ensure that your um, things that you write are succinct and to the point, you know, because your question was this long and I told you it wouldn't be fitting. So I made it succinct and a lot of extra words. This is completely off topic, but I think it helps because the, we live in a very distracted world, very non-focused world. So you want to help them get to the, you know, get to the point you want to help them to see your point sooner rather than later because you you might lose them so i'm gonna um get back to the question so you have some advice from my friend lee as well in baltimore uh surround yourself with people who remind you of what you've done and the impact you've made in the world sometimes that helps from outside if if you don't have that from um within so i'm gonna uh, come back to this question because we're talking about when is it the right time to leave right somebody asked me this yesterday I have an offer from a much smaller company. Their equivalent of my resignation is divided into two bands. Okay? Two bands. One is higher, one is lower. And they're trying to get me into the lower of the two since I got promoted one and a half years ago. I don't really understand the link here. Since you got promoted one and a half years ago, I'm thinking they should get you to the higher band. But anyway, whatever it is. She, so he has two follow-up questions. Number one. Is there any way I could persuade them to change the designation on offer to the higher band? Yes, of course you can. It comes back to negotiation skills. Watch my video on YouTube on salary negotiation. There's not, it's not just salary negotiation. You can negotiate many things, including title, band, vacations, benefits, everything. You can, but have a very strong reason for doing so. Talk about the highlight, the value that you bring to them. Not just the value that you bring, I'm a great guy and I can do this. No, I can do this particularly for you. And I think I deserve more. Say that in that way. Very humble, kindly, ask nicely. Watch my video. It's a 13-minute video. It's got over 30,000 views. Um, every day it's getting more and more views and I'm getting detailed comments on that video. So it's the best thing I can honestly say that comes from years of experience and making mistakes. Watch that video if you haven't already. But of course you can ask. But back it up. Back it up. Don't just ask blindly. And if they don't budge, should I walk away? You're, you're going back to the same thing that we said earlier. 
you're asking me what I should do or what you should do. And I can't answer that for you. You're looking for validation from the outside and that's not a good thing to do. Why? Because you know deep down what the right answer is. I can help you get there. I can guide you to get there, but I can't tell you what it is. I can't tell you what it looks like because I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes. Uh, should I walk away? I know signing up for a higher pay with lower designation results in lower pay hikes over the years due to parity issues. Uh, I don't know if their offer is justified. You need to see what's going on in the market for something like this. Check out Glassdoor, check out Payscale, talk to headhunter friends and find out is it an attractive offer? Um, yes, you're right to some extent. When you have a higher pay with a lower designation, they don't have justification to keep increasing you, right? Because they want to make sure that others are also in fairly compensated. And that's what you mean by parity. That makes sense. I would say, please don't think so much about money right now. You've got to focus on the job. Is it meaty enough? Is it going to be attractive for your CV? Is it going to make you look and think and learn better. If it is, think long term. Marathon, not a sprint. Money will come. When you're good and you bring value, money will come. I wouldn't say no to someone who's paying me a thousand rupees or ten thousand rupees less. Short term. That's very short term minded, short term focused, very tunnel vision. Um, longer term, what do you stand to gain? Make that old fashioned strength, you know, pros and cons list or whatever it is that you want if it's a strong role and you see there's going to be in everything at I'm everything I talked about today the opposite of this it's gonna it looks like a place that will give you energy great people good culture looks like a place that you learn a lot looks like a place you can grow you'll have some impact there'll be a purpose in French we say raison d'être reason for being they have a reason for being it gets you excited it's the not indifferent because indifferent is opposite and when you think about it on a Sunday, like this Sunday, it's going to give you a good feeling, whatever it is. Come down to all of those and see. Uh, and nobody else can answer that for you. So only they can say their offer is justified. But if I were you, I wouldn't just accept it at face value. I would ask because it shows your self-worth. And 81% of all recruiters expect you to negotiate. 81% of all recruiters expect you to negotiate. So go ahead and negotiate. Be prepared if they don't, like I said, go back and watch that video of mine. It's on YouTube, find it. And if they still say no, yeah, sure. Be prepared to walk away. If you have a job in hand, be prepared to walk away. But then remember you're burning that bridge. Very low chance of you coming back. Nobody likes to be refused. Would you like to be refused? Let's say Valentine's Day, you, you like this girl. You say, hey, let's go out. I think we should go out. What do you think? And she says, no. And three days later, she says yes, because somebody dumped her or whatever. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes pickings, wasteful pickings from somewhere. I'm being I'm being honest here, always. So I hope that helps you. I know you're watching. Um, that's it. That's, I think, what I wanted to cover. I don't want to keep it the full hour. But if you have other questions, please let me know. We talked about a lot of stuff today. Um, quick recap. If you haven't subscribed already, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go to the membership. Go to superrajyourself.com. It's not just for job seekers. It's for people who are looking at growth mindset, a higher career, better career. Um, happy New Year and think of the year of the ox. And you need to know, is it a low phase that you're going through or you actually think it's time to leave, right? Nobody can um, exclaim that for you and you're better have really strong reasons for leaving, just like you have strong reasons for entering. Remember, you want to be in the shoes of, you want to be in the driver's seat because otherwise, um, you're kind of like going with the flow, you're hitchhiking. You're like, yeah, I'll just go wherever you're going. Just drop me anywhere. No, you're in the driver's seat. You decide when you stop or not. If you don't manage your career, somebody else will manage it for you. And look at the year we've had. People have been laid off left, right, and center. That's like they're breaking up with you, right? It's the equivalent of a Valentine's Day breakup. It doesn't have to be that they always make the first move. Particularly if you know there's not going to be a financial payout from that. Maybe not. It's time you take a decision. And if you say, I'm going to start looking, then start looking around. I'm not saying jump. I'm not saying stop. Nobody can answer that for you. But I don't think it's very um, wise 
if you don't have income coming in? How are you going to sustain yourself and your family? So those six signs we talked about. A quick, I've already been through this many times. Um, energy or the lack of it, you're not learning, you're not growing, you don't see an impact, you feel completely indifferent to everything, including people, your company, and your salary. And you got this case of the Sunday as the Sunday scaries or that Sunday feeling, the TSF. Thank you, Lee. That's so kind of you. Hey Namrata, what do you think about TSF? You have TSF? Uh, I understand it's a helpless situation because you cannot leave without another job. If you have another job in hand, then think about it. But you know, what is that expression? Don't what is don't drink poison something something. Oh gosh. Um, you know what I'm talking about just because you're thirsty. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Don't drink poison just because you're thirsty. It's not the best alternative sometimes. Sarita, I'm glad you're here. You're welcome. Um, OK, OK. I was just about to hang up. <laughs> we have another question. I have an offer from a smaller company, Srinivas. And I'm trying to negotiate my salary watching your YouTube video. However, they're not, they are try, they are not trying to negotiate because I have a small experience. OK short experience and they are referencing only those and expect to start with the lower band salary i've convinced all about the values and experience um sticking to but they're only sticking to what they want and preparing to walk away it's your choice srinivas it's your choice if you think it's not fair to you if it's not a jump if it's not um making you feel good and it's not um respectful of you and your time you decide nobody can decide that for you OK? Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I hope this has been helpful for you. These signs of breakups are very tricky. Uh, do, uh, do, I hope I see you next week. Uh, we have the amazing, um, I think it's Jack Kelly next week, but I'm not sure. If you haven't heard of Jack Kelly, check him out. Literally, his name is Jack, J-A-C-K. Uh, -A and. Uh, K-E-L-L-Y. Yeah, Jack Kelly's on next week. And we're going to talk about recruitment. And we're going to talk about some ugly things about recruitment that we don't talk about anywhere. And the point of a recruiter that you need to keep in mind. So Jack Kelly's here next week. I hope to see you. Um, fantastic guy. Very charismatic. Very funny. Very down to earth. And very generous to share his um, value with the world. Having said that, Appreciate you being here. Wish you a lovely. Ah, why am I still showing that that Sunday feeling? It's so depressing. With that, having said that, I want to wish you um, a Chinese New Year, wherever you are. You know, it's it's always a nice thing to see. You know, some cultures, some community celebrating, whether it's Diwali, Christmas, Chinese New Year, Hanukkah, whatever it is. Take the best of everything and um, wish you a lovely weekend ahead. And see you next. Friday, same time on Supercharged Fridays. Bye for now.